Have you ever walked into a room and completely forgotten why you went there? Or spent three hours planning the perfect morning routine instead of actually doing the morning routine? Yeah, that's your brain actively sabotaging you. So today we're exposing seven ridiculous ways our brain works against us every single day. So your brain is basically that, well, that toxic friend who says they want the best for you, but keeps ruining your life. Let's dive in. So let's start with the morning lie we all tell ourselves. Your alarm goes off, right? Your, your brain immediately goes, ah, oh, just nine more minutes. The small amount of sleep will transform us into a refreshed, energized person ready to conquer the day. You know what nine minutes of disrupted sleep gives you? Absolutely nothing. Nothing at all. Actually worse than nothing. Those new sessions put you into a new sleep cycle you can't finish and then making you groggier than if you'd just gotten up the first time. So scientists call this sleep inertia. Your brain is literally working worse than if you were legally drunk. So you set your alarm for 6.30 because you need to be up by 6.30, but you've already planned to snooze until 7 anyway. So why not just set it for seven and get actual continuous sleep? Because your brain convinces you those fragmented nine minutes power naps between jarring alarms are somehow bonus sleep, but they're not. They're garbage sleep that makes you feel like garbage. So your brain goes, but it feels so good to go back to sleep. Sure, for 30 seconds, then you're yanked awake again, more exhausted, now running late and then starting your day in a cortisol fueled panic. Your brain has successfully turned sleep, the thing meant to restore you, into a stress event. Those crucial snooze minutes, you won't even remember them by breakfast, but you'll feel their effects all day. Oh, this one's devious. Your brain has discovered a cheat code. You can get almost the same dopamine hit from planning to do something as actually doing it. So what does your brain do? It, it makes you a planning addict. So you spend Sunday night creating the ultimate color-coded schedule. Meal prep plans, workout routines, study schedules. Your brain is high on its own supply. We're going to be so productive. You've basically tricked your brain into thinking you've already accomplished everything. The dopamine has been released. Mission accomplished, right? Well, Monday arrives, that beautiful schedule ignored because your brain already got its reward. It's like eating the icing of a cake and wondering why you're not interested in the actual cake anymore. You've exhausted your motivation on the fantasy of productivity instead of actual productivity. So your brain goes, we need a perfect plan before we can start. No, that's your brain being a dopamine junkie. It knows that planning feels good and, and doing feels hard. So it keeps you in endless planning loops, new notebooks, new apps, new systems. Meanwhile, nothing actually gets done. You have seven different productivity ads, but you haven't actually been productive since you started optimizing your system three months ago. So the worst part, your brain gets better at this over time. I mean, it learns that it can get you to spend entire weekends setting up for success, planning your business instead of starting it, organizing your workout clothes instead of wearing them, creating elaborate study guides instead of actually studying. Your brain has turned you into a professional preparer who never actually performs. Your brain is convinced it's a Hollywood screenwriter and it's preparing you for conversations that will never happen. So you have a meeting tomorrow. Your brain decides to run a full rehearsal at 11 p.m. It scripts your brilliant points. They're likely objections, your devastating comebacks, that singer that'll leave everyone speechless. You're practicing acceptance speeches for conversations that don't exist. So you show up, the conversation goes completely differently, all that brilliant dialogue, useless. The person asks something you never considered, meanwhile you're trying to force the conversation toward your rehearsed points like a bad improv actor who won't let go of their predetermined bit, right? The actual conversation is now worse because you're not really listening and you're waiting for your cue to deliver prepared lines. So your brain's excuse is, we're being prepared. No, you're just being anxious. Your brain is turning future social interactions into present moment stress. You're literally experiencing the stress of a conversation multiple times. Once in imagination, once in reality. And the imagined versions 
is usually worse. So the worst part of this is that your brain doesn't just prepare for normal conversations, it prepares for confrontations that will never happen. It augments with people you, you haven't seen in years and defending yourself against accusations nobody's making. You're shadow boxing with ghosts while your real life passes by. You've won a thousand arguments in the shower, but you can't remember what your actual friend said five minutes ago because you weren't really listening. This is your brain's inability to cut its losses. It would rather lose more than admit the original loss. So you bought a, a non-refundable ticket to an outdoor concert, right? So the day arrives, but it's pouring rain and you're already sick. So you don't even like the band that much anymore, but your brain goes, hey, we spent 80 bucks, we have to go. So you spend 30 bucks on parking, 50 bucks on overpriced drinks, you stand in the rain for three hours, you get sicker and you have a miserable time. Total loss, 160 quid plus your health and happiness. All because your brain couldn't accept losing 80 bucks. So that 80 bucks is gone, whether you go or not. It's already spent. It doesn't exist anymore, but your brain treats it like it's still in play. Like suffering through the concert somehow saves that money it doesn't. You're just adding bad to bad. You're literally paying extra in time, money and misery to avoid wasting something that's already wasted. Where this really hurts? Well, let's take relationships. We've been together five years. We, we can't break up now. So you stay for another miserable five years? Or jobs? I've put in 10 years. I can't leave now, right? So you waste what? Another decade? Or degrees? Who? I'm three years into this major I hate. I can't change now. So you finish a degree you'll never use, then you go back to school anyway, and your brain would rather you be miserable for another, what, 5, 10, 40 years and waste what's already gone. The double cruelty here is that your brain not only makes you continue, it makes you feel stupid for wanting to quit. So you're miserable and feeling guilty about being miserable. You know that restaurant with terrible food? Well, your brain makes you finish the meal because you paid for it and then makes you feel wasteful for not enjoying food that was never enjoyable. It's a masterclass in psychological self-torture. So the second you enter a grocery store, your brain performs a complete memory wipe of everything you own, need, or came for. So you needed milk, right? Or bread and eggs. And you wrote a list. You looked at the list in the car. You walk through those automatic doors and bam! Your brain replaces your actual needs with pure impulse. Ooh, fancy cheese. Artisanal crackers. Is that a new flavor of chips? We definitely need three types of mustard. So you end up spending, what, 147 bucks. You get home, no milk, no bread, no eggs. But you do have ingredients for a charcuterie board that you'll never make and four bags of snacks you didn't know existed 20 minutes ago. You have to go back tomorrow for the things you actually needed and your brain has turned a simple errand into a two-day, 200 bucks adventure. Your brain's excuse? But we might need it. No, no, you never need it. Wasabi flavored anything. Your brain is like a magpie in there, distracted by every shiny package and limited edition label. It completely disconnects from your actual life. You live alone, but your brain is shopping for a family of eight who's hosting a dinner party tonight. And there is, of course, a hunger amplifier. God forbid you shop while hungry. Your brain turns into a doomsday prepper. We need all the food. What if there's an apocalypse and we only have one type of cereal? So you buy ingredients for 19 different meals you'll never cook because by the time you get home, you're tired and order pizza anyway. Your hungry brain at the store and your tired brain at home, they've never met. They don't know each other. They have completely different plans for your life. So you stand up with purpose. You walk to another room with determination. You arrive and absolutely no idea why you're there. Your brain just hit delete on your entire mission. Scientists call this event boundary perception. Your brain uses doorways to separate memories and experiences. So when you pass through a doorway, your brain literally creates a new chapter and sometimes forgets to carry over information from the last chapter. It's filing memories and accidentally putting your current thought into the trash. So you're watching TV. Remember you need to, to check if you have milk for tomorrow's breakfast. You, you walk to the kitchen, you stand in front of an open fridge. No, no thoughts, nothing, an, an empty head. You grab a snack. So you go back to the couch, you sit down and then ah, uh, the milk back to the kitchen, doorway, 
gone again. <laughs> this continues until you either give up or accidentally remember while doing something completely unrelated three hours later. Your brain's priorities are this. You can't remember why you walked into a room five seconds ago, but you can remember in perfect detail that embarrassing thing you said in seventh grade, every word, every facial expression of every witness. Your brain deleted check milk, but you preserved that time you called your teacher mom in 4K resolution forever. Now, this gets worse when you're cleaning or organizing. You pick up items in the bedroom that belongs in the bathroom, so you walk to the bathroom, right? You see toothpaste. You remember you need to add it to the shopping list, so you walk to the kitchen for the list. There you see dishes. You start doing the dishes. Three hours later, random bedroom item is still in your hands. You never wrote down toothpaste. The dishes are half done, and somehow you're reorganizing the garage. Your brain has turned you into a confused used NPC in your own life. So every night your brain becomes convinced that tomorrow morning you'll be a completely different person, motivated, energetic and ready to conquer the world at 5 a.m. So it's 11 p.m. You're feeling guilty about your wasted day. So your brain goes, tomorrow will be different. We'll wake up at 5 a.m., work out, meditate, journal, meal prep and, and start that side business. So you set 17 alarms. You're pumped, right? Tomorrow the day. Everything changes. Tomorrow. The real scenario, 5 a.m. arrives and the person who made those plans, well, they don't exist. That was night you, a delusional optimist who makes promises that morning you has to keep. And morning you barely remembers their own name, let alone why there's an alarm going off in the darkness. Morning you hits snooze 17 times and wakes up at the exact same time as always. Now feeling guilty and tired. So your brain goes, we work better under pressure. No, night brain is writing checks that morning brain can't cash. It's like drunk you making plans that sober you has to execute. So night brain doesn't have to do any of the work. So it's generous with the morning brain's time and energy, right? Night brain is that friend who volunteers you for things because they won't have to do them. So this happens every single night. Your brain has months, years, decades of data showing that morning you is not a morning person. But night brain remains convinced that tomorrow is a day you'll transform into someone who loves sunrise yoga. It's the same fantasy every night. Like your, your brain has amnesia about who you actually are. Einstein's definition of insanity? Doing the same thing repeatedly, expecting different results. Well, that's your night brain every night setting that 5 a.m. alarm. Your brain isn't your enemy. It's just running on autopilot most of the time, making decisions based on rules it wrote for a completely different life. It's like using a map from 1952 to navigate with today. Some of the main roads are still there, but it's going to lead you astray more often than not. The snooze button delusion? Your brain genuinely thinks it's giving you a gift. The planning addiction? It's mistaking preparation for progress. That grocery store amnesia? Your brain gets overwhelmed and just starts improvising badly. Every one of these glitches is your brain confidently doing the wrong thing while believing it's helping. So here's the thing. Knowing about these patterns is powerful. You'll start catching yourself in the act. You'll notice when you're rehearsing arguments in the shower with people who aren't there. You'll realize you're standing in your kitchen with no memory of why you came. You'll see yourself about to waste an entire evening just because you have a dentist appointment the next day at 2 p.m. You can't fix your brain's wiring, but you can learn its tricks. Once you know the patterns, you can work around them. And honestly, sometimes you just have to appreciate the absurdity of carrying around a brain that can solve complex problems, but can't remember why it walked into a room. So which one of these does your brain do to you most often? Let me know in the comments below. And if you want to learn more about how your brain works and how to actually make it work for you instead of against you, check out brainacademy.com, where we dive deep into the science of your magnificent, ridiculous brain. Brain out. Sharpen your mind.